Hello and welcome back to the Only Aki's podcast. I feel like we say this every time we do one, but it has genuinely been a long time since we've done one of these, nearly a month. So there's been a lot happening uh, on and off the pitch, unfortunately. Um, Just briefly on the stuff that's been happening off the pitch, we don't really want to talk too much about it, to be honest. Uh, There's a lot of talk been going on over the last few weeks on this topic. I feel like I've said everything I want to say on Twitter and in the Clyde video. I feel like I kind of covered everything I want to talk about. Um, I'm here with my co-host Brandon um, and we basically just said we don't want to talk about this. It's not been resolved yet. Hopefully it will be resolved very soon. And like many other fans, as I said on Twitter, I won't be attending home games until the bans are uplifted. I feel like they will unjustly ban these fans and that's all I'm going to say on it. Brandon, I will bring you into the podcast now. First of all, how are we? And what do you have to say about the current situation? I know, listen, it's the past couple of weeks have actually, it's been a bit of a whirlwind of emotions, but on the park it's been really good. And I think what I've said to you is, we've done this podcast for a long time and more often than not, it's negativity that we're speaking about. And we've went on so long not doing the podcast the past sort of month or so because... Going back into December, a lot of things have sort of happened that's affected a lot of fans that's not been good off the park um, and affected the club that's not been good off the park and stuff like that. But the past few weeks um, on the park, um, they really do deserve some credit, um, both management and players. And it wouldn't be fair that because things are happening off the park that we let that hinder giving them the plaudits they deserve. So I think that's why we're um, justifiably here and yeah. doing the podcast we'll do. Absolutely. Well, let's start with basically where we left off. So the last one we did was our Christmas special. After that was our first game of the new year and we lost away to air. Now, it's a negative. It's a loss. However, there were two positives that came in that day. That just before the game, they announced Tom Sparrow on loan from Stoke and Dylan McGowan on loan from Kelly. And what a difference they've made uh, in the short time they've been here. Dylan McGowan's really shored up that defence. He's brought leadership to the back line, he's brought consistency to the back line, he's helped carry some young Fergus Owens to the side of him, Daniel O'Reilly on the other side who had a poor start to the season, I can admit that himself, and then Tom Sparrow down the right, playing as a right wing back, I thought he's brought a bit of this, um, defensive, um, he's been solid in defence and he's also offered something going forward, his crosses are wicked into the box, um, very very dangerous, so I think those are two really good signings and from what we've seen, granted has been limited, um, I've been impressed. Uh, what about you? Um, yeah, I think just touching, but I don't want to touch too much in the, the air game, but actually speaking about the air game, I thought we could beat 1 now, but there wasn't very much in the game. Yeah, completely. Uh, obviously, of course, it's Josh Mullen that's going to score. Um, a reflected free kick. Reflected free kick, uh, but he, he has sort of shown that we clearly want to play him in the right position last season because he's on fire and I think so I just saying just for air permanently yeah, there um, but no that game there I thought well, we're unlucky not to take anything out of it but like you've mentioned about uh, Sparrow and McGowan complete breath of fresh air having them in defence and it just it's frustrating because um, obviously one of the, I've been one of the rank and tried to stand behind Vanken as long as possible I think we've been one of the very few that actually have probably mm-hmm. said that we don't want them sacked um, or what went and let go but he broke that stubbornness and amended the setup. Yeah. and look at the difference we've had by changing that setup. yes you can we can speak about the players that have been brought in because they have definitely made a difference but actually being able to change our system into a system which we've been asking for which was different to that one which we were playing for so long and just weren't yeah. getting results with it um, we've reaped the rewards by bringing in some players that have been brilliant but also changing the manner in which we've been set up in games yeah and the game after that was the 3-1 against Clyde uh, quarter final of the Challenge Cup um, not, did it happen? I don't think it happened round about that game um, but it was it was a good game to watch I imagine as a neutral as an Aki's fan I hated it because I felt it was classic it was going the way of classic Aki's it was a game that we comfortably should be winning we changed the team around it was arguably a weak in Aki's side and you thought we were doing all right, then it all came crumbling down. Thankfully, we got the third goal uh, and we went through, but the game was playing out and I remember sitting there thinking, with everything going on right now, the last thing we need is to lose. <laughs> at home, at home, 
in, in quotations uh, to Clyde and they cut that as the last thing we need thankfully that wasn't the case though yeah um, to be fair my view is pretty restricted um, <laughs> to say the least <laughs> um, but I felt we contained them pretty well <laughs> at previous in the game um, just keep having the fun um, Where do you do your job, Brandon? Yes, he's busy. Did you say to me? Yes, uh, okay. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, um, aye, you've, you've had it in the nail there. I thought it would just have been typical Aki's for us to be having all the sort of problems off the park to then go play a team that is ground sharing with herself. There was obviously a lot of. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of discussion about whether that should have happened or not at the beginning yeah. of the seasons or not, season or not. So we're ground sharing with them. They're playing them in a home tie in the cup. They've not had the best of seasons themselves. They've been exact, really, really poor actually themselves. And we go one 0 down. And if my mind serves me right, it was Ross Cunningham yeah. that, that scores. Yeah. And you just say that's that's has a good goal though. This is going to be um, classic hockey. So it's just going to go down the way in which we're expecting it to be but no credit 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 was credit's due got one back but then obviously another one goes back but then second half it was I don't know if it was uh, the legs of Clyde tired out or we made, we, made, we made some changes as well going on in the second half and it, it, it did seem very cruise control in the second half in comparison to what it was the first half and I think we deserved when we got the win I thought we could have scored a few more but very last minute they, they nearly scored an absolute world of it. post um, oh my god and again it was on the side I'm sitting there and do you know that way where as soon as he liked to take the shot I just said I think it was Rudy I was sitting next to him I just went this is in and it was that way where I was just it was in so grateful I hit the post by the way you have no idea and it was that way where he hit the post the ref blew the whistle straight away and after he was a wee bit like Oh my god, take a second, fucking just deep breath that we didn't draw it to Clyde at home. Yeah. But uh, aye, that, that game was, as you said, I think you, I think you get it perfectly there. The first half, like many teams do when they come to Aki's, they just ran at us for the first half. They closed us down, they didn't get us any time on the ball whatsoever, and we struggled. As soon as their leg starts to tire in the second half, we get more time on the ball. Mimna was able to pick up more passes. Lucas the ball was very similar. And, um, what a player what a, we'll get to that <laughs> um, and we just controlled the game basically from there on in so um, really really glad we won that we jump off the back of that home to Morton and you're thinking home to Morton Morton are doing really well Doug mm-hmm. has got them working hard we know fucking we know what it was like when we went to Morton um, they're always going to be a tough team and it's a wee Andy winter penalty we had yes. to win the game so we won now one back to back wins and mm-hmm. uh, what did you see? Did that, I don't even see Jay. I don't even remember seeing that game. I don't think I saw, saw any of that game. I just saw the. I just uh, saw the highlights. I actually don't think I saw any of that game. No, 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 I can't. I can't really remember no. if I saw that game or not. To be honest with you, um, I can remember seeing the highlight of the penalty. Um, but Agent Emery, thank you. Um, yes, thank you. Obviously, it's a massive win. I think going back out slightly. If we lost that Clyde game we wouldn't have won the Morton game because that had just been because how mm. bad everything was yeah. it had just been a complete downward spiral yeah. in fact we've won that game we've then went the Morton game and I um, we've got the win and it's a massive win because obviously Morton so uh, as you say everybody got them playing well I think they've had a wee, wee bit of slump of form recently mm-hmm. as well but no massive win uh, massive three points and much well, much needed in the league because obviously we won the game in the, in the whatever cup it's called SPL film that's a challenge, um, but the league's the most important thing right now, and to get the three points was massive. And um, as far as I'm led to believe, it was a very much a well fought three points. Yes. Um, Morton weren't meant to be particularly the best, but we dug in deep, and don't know if Gills was doing that favour getting sent off mm-hmm. as well. So thank you. Well, off the back of that well fought victory, um, we'd go into the cup against Ross County, Premiership opposition in the Scottish Cup, and again didn't see the game but all I'm getting told afterwards usually after the games I get a few messages with people talking about the game and, and stuff like that and a few tweets all the messages I got was that was a proper old school Aki's performance we made we, we worked hard we made us hard to break down we didn't get many chances we looked dangerous whatever we did we just didn't have that, that finishing touch um, but work rate effort all that was the top 
and we've always said that's the minimum we expect from an Aki side. We've always said if you give a hundred percent, you lose. We can't criticise you because you gave a hundred percent, and that's all I get told after the Ross County game is that Premiership opposition. We go to extra time. We went on penalties once again. Ryan Fulton is the hero. Somebody who's having a very good, despite our um, position in the league. I think he's having a good season. Ryan Fulton, and we go through in the next round of the Scottish Cup. I mean, gutty we couldn't see the game. But good that we're seeing these type of performances mm-hmm. coming out. A perform- performance we, we thought we were going to see from John Rankin straight off the bat. Yeah, I think uh, what you say is not fully true. We did manage to see it via FaceTime for the penalties. That, yes, okay, that is true. That is true. When someone at the game managed to FaceTime us and we got to, to see it. <laughs> it was about 40 of us turned around one on the iPhone. Um, <laughs> Having to ask, did that go in? Can I see it? Did that go in? Yeah, it was pure delayed reaction because we're waiting to hear the crowd <laughs> behind us. It's just, it's just very surreal but no like you said mate it's, uh, it's funny um, <laughs> I'm just, you've got it man I'm just sit, everybody's sitting around now with your phone if, it, if anybody's seen the video that I think I put on Twitter or the photos and that if anybody's seen it there is one wee iPhone propped up on a laptop there's about 40 of us crowding I was at the back right at the crowd <laughs> and I was like I can't see anything and what, I don't even know who it is one guy went let it bend through he can't see <laughs> I was like getting light through the crowd because I was too small it was brilliant it was brilliant but um, I just a surreal moment um, I think the view for the terrace picked up and stuff like that, like that oh, as yeah. well which has been quite funny but anyway back to the the Ross County game I, the, the, I've heard the exact same things about it it was just a t- typical Aki's of old dig in sort of never give up um, chasing everything down sort of not giving my second in the ball and like you said mate that's the type of performance we expected from yeah. John Rankin and I think that's probably what we we definitely saw in the second half of this game which we'll come on to but um to what I've been led to believe, the games bar the Clyde one because that was a sort of weak inside. Yeah, that's the type of performance that's happened, and for the most part of all three of the games, mm-hmm. which is all we've expected. Like I'm going to say the famous sentence: "So drink." Um, standard of the league is rotten. Um, so if you have those type of performances then you've got to get points yeah. um, adding players in positions which are improved, have improved ourselves and um, yeah it's, it does definitely the players we've brought in have definitely been an improvement on who was there previously yeah. which is not a huge criticism of these players but they've just not been good enough I don't think many players this season have got pass marks bar the person you mentioned there by Phil and I think yeah, he deserves utmost credit for his pass performances um, in the past few few weeks because everybody's quick enough to sort of jump in the bandwagon and criticise when criticism's due so you know I definitely deserve applause because there's been a few saves which I've saw via highlights and I saw on Saturday which he's um, he, he looks he's using confidence he's coming out for the ball um, he's criticised for he's, he's coming out for the ball a lot on Saturday which we we'll touch on but no he deserves confidence but no um, great to win the, the Ross County game one in penalties and a Sort of a fun, a, a weird um, surroundings, but we get it put in the next hat, and then we've obviously got Hearts in the next round, which yeah. obviously n- not the most ideal of draws if you want a, um, a cup run, because let's be honest, Hearts are easily the, the third best side in, in, in yeah. Scotland right now, despite what other managers have said about them recently. And <laughs> um, that's a touchy subject, but no, they are. They, they, I've watched them a few times recently and they've, they've been brilliant so I don't expect us to get much but one bonus about that game is it will bring a lot of revenue in for the club which um, 3,500 tickets 3,500 tickets um, I can do the maths and all that but I cannot be bothered yeah, yeah. but there's, um, no, there's a lot of different ways that's going to be to bring in revenue ticket sales um, obviously TV money despite if we win or lose the game you get a decent amount for getting to that round anyway so it's good it's good income for the club and I'm sure it'll be a uh, Hopefully, maybe it's already been distributed. Whilst we do this, it's currently that's why we keep keep checking our phones. It is worth saying that it's it's deadline day. day. Um, So hopefully, that money that wouldn't have been accounted for this season um, will be reinvested so that the the club well. I'm sure it will. So um, no, I'm looking forward to the the Hearts game next Friday. Um, Not the Friday, is it next Friday? Next Friday will be next Friday. Aye, so no, that'll be good. Um, Aye, next Friday. Aye, next Friday. Um, don't think we'll win it um, just because they're, they're such a good team, but it'll, it'll be a good occasion regardless. And yeah. 
bring in good money for the club. But no, good to win the Ross County. And speaking of Hearts, thank you very much, Hearts, because one of our other transfer window signings um, is Connor Smith, young Connor Smith, who very promising winger, experience, um, I say experience, um, involved in the Hearts first team. Um, we had one young player of the year at Queen's Park, and they were in League One and won the league. Um, so a player with plenty of potential, a decent player as well. And I, I'm not going to lie, it's not a name that when I was told that I went, I know who that is, straight away, said it to David, who is part of Only Aki's, and he was immediately buzzing. Great player. I think he, he you know, you know, he loves the lower leagues. Um, did so well with Queen's Park and all that. So he was absolutely buzzing. And um, again, I feel like I said this in the game, didn't see the game, uh, the part of this whole game. Uh, but from what I say, from what I am told, sorry, it made a good account of himself. The second 45 minutes, him and, of course, Debut goal scorer, Dylan Stevenson, and the one from Newcastle. No, like, um, I don't think we've really touched individual on the signings as of yet, which I'm sure we probably will do after Absolutely. we speak about the games. But no, like, he came on and I think so, both him and Stevenson and Zanah came on on Saturday and made a huge difference. Um, Smithy, I, I, I was somewhat brought to yourself, didn't know much about him. Um, it's not a signing when we made him, it's a proper major league. Sort of, mm-hmm. Yes, I think everyone was expecting another boy for hearts when you and Henderson. I think yes, that was the one that was having on everybody's lips, and that was the one they were wanting. So Smith sort of went in the, the back burner, so to speak, in people's minds. But when he's been brought in and he actually take a step back, you see that he's been he's actually been involved in their Europa League games. Yeah. He's he was part of Queen's Park sort of league winning team last season, and he got the young player here. And yeah, you see you see him coming on on Saturday and. Some of the playing which Aki's were doing was just, it was very sexy. I can honestly make that sexy, sexy Aki's. It's a point to me. It's just, it's something that I've not saw all season. Um, it was just the man on them which were passing the ball together and they were just driving with it at players. And Smith was part of that. Mm-hmm. Smith was one of the ones who's got to get on the ball, he's putting his head up, looking about, and either driving with it forward or playing, playing a good pass, turning, etc. So, the player I'm most excited about and the player that, um, Gave me a stoner, if you want to call it that. Um, when Saturday was Dylan Stevenson. You sound like you had a great day on Saturday, weren't you? No, Saturday was um, things haven't been the best um, for MD really recently, um, <coughs> regardless of any situations I've got in the background. But um, I, that was one of my best days in life, probably in a good long time. Just everything about it was just so good. Um, everybody enjoyed themselves, and so Saturday just it did it really encapsulated that escapism that, that Aki's is um, obviously as I say it's not, not been the best of times for MD recently and a lot of things happening um, with individuals etc so um, no it was it was amazing it was just everything about it and Dylan Stevenson goal was just it's, it's, I think I said to you this after the game it's one of those that um, I've not saw an Aki's player do it in a very very long time we, we've sort of caught them in the counter and he's driving down, sort of bearing on goal with the defenders, like sort of chasing after him for about 35, 40 yards. He's that sort of one on one with the keeper for sort of the edge of the box. He's like, you're like, he's going to hit it straight at the keeper, and the keeper's going to save it. But he's just cool as you like, just, and I'm fucking well annoyed the fact there's no highlights like, so far. Like, I've been refreshing the so video. So I have been part of this with YouTube constantly, and obviously, because they've got beat, they've not put it up, but pissing me off, Max, I didn't really want to see it because it was just. It's one of those ones where you pause before it goes in, see, because like everybody's on their sort of tiptoes. Like, I know I'm getting you a bit jealous that you're on. Driving down. I had a lovely weekend away, but I remember. Everybody was on their sort of tiptoes, just getting ready for the outcome, and he slotted it by and proper sort of finishers go and showed his what he's clearly capable of scoring your debut. I, I don't know if there's many people that have scored in their debut for that. Tashin Summers. Um, Mikel Antoine Courier is one of them, Andy Winter done it as well. Um, I think MD, many more people off the top of my head will be playing it, but um, I showed who he was capable of. And again, he was another player on Saturday that a lot of things were going through him and the type of play he was playing mm-hmm. uh, with other individuals was, I mean, it was just unbelievable. Um, but he, he was. You've had these two players that have came on, the subs changed the game, and that's where credit needs to go to ranking because the subs did change the game. We were so poor in the first half. For the first sort of 25 30 minutes, it seemed like we were playing one of the old firm, it was sort of backs to the wall. We weren't threatening him. He was very isolated. Make the subs, second half, completely different game, and we were by far in the front foot. But there was a person that was just in the middle of all that, and 
who had nothing went through and that's um, the player that we didn't know who he was for like a long period of time. He was missing, he was missing but um, he certainly hasn't been missing recently and if that performance in the second half of Saturday is turning anything to go by then I have no doubt that we'll get out of this mess because he is just what a player. Mm. What a player. He's a baller. He's a baller, as you say. He was just phenomenal. What is that? He, he glides like he a glides he glides like, like a reindeer. Like a reindeer. <laughs> no, he was he was phenomenal, mate. And it just some of the ways he was turning around yeah. players. He was just he was getting the ball, he had his head up, he's as if he already knew the players were behind him, yeah. he was just going by them, he was like pushing them out the way. Just brilliant player. I like I like Lucas the ball a lot and I think one of the things that's it's been difficult for him is obviously this concussion thing right at the start. But also, I mean, from everything I've seen personally, um, he seems very shy, like a really quiet guy. And I think it just I think it probably took him a long time to fit in mm. and a long time just to settle. Now he's settled, he's he's made it down, obviously for Newcastle, oh. so that new up. Um so that'll help him obviously as well. But as you said, if he's pulling off stuff that I'm getting told about from yourself and other people then I think we've we'll got a proper player um, on our hands to the end of the season and I was thought he just saw a big transfer league Simon Lodi away at County I saw that pre-contract because yes. um, actually David Simon um, there's loads going on man I feel so busy there now because like, it's the deadline day I feel like I'm so distracted when I watch my phone um, but uh, aye so I, I love um, Lucas De Ball I really do I think, I think he'll be a really really important player for us and, co- and confidence will definitely come in and that. like you said he seemed a bit shy he's got his he's got his pal up for Newcastle who he, he, the ball also seems to be he, he does he seems to have like sort of came out of his a bit in the way he, he saw him like talking and speaking to players on the park as well so yeah. I think obviously confidence Bruce confidence and I think if we just keep the man on which we are just now then he'll, he'll definitely shine in some of our games and um, I let's not get carried away because We've obviously won four games out of the last five, which is great, but it doesn't take away from the maybe put a negative spin on it, it doesn't take away from where we are in the league. Yeah. We're still bottom the league. We've had a absolute atrocious season, but the only way is up and hopefully if we just keep playing the way in which we did, especially that second half on Saturday, then I don't have any doubt we'll get out of this fight and I think we've brought in players um so far that will make a massive difference I think we've got players coming back for injury we've had a player come back for injury and Lucas Duvall who will make a huge difference um, and there are a few clubs that are in a bit of, but are down on spiral at the moment so it's just about keeping this up and ah, yeah, there's, there's still a long way to go so there's we're, we're, we're still not dead and buried no. yet uh, and we've still got both today and a couple of days left for the transfer window If you can't see Ben's a bit raging because we've had a bit of a technical error with our mics, so yeah, you won't hear have the best audio for the first half. But yes. It's not the end of the world, there's bigger things happening <laughs> in life, so we just need to chill out. Ben just had a hissy fit, he just destroyed his GP <laughs> studio because we had half an hour of the camera audio. But I apologise well, well, for yes, that. Um, I, I get a bit scared there I've actually been a bit frightened a bit intimidated <laughs> there to be honest with you yes I apologise um, for that but anyway I'm just going to check Twitter now because see if anything's popped up there's anything popping up I think I don't know where we were at there were we, who were we talking about the ball we, we were talking about the ball the ball was the last one we spoke about I think about. we spoke about enough about yes. the ball there so I think we move on now to January transfer window I completely agree um, so speaking of the January transfer window Brandon as we said at the start this is deadline day mm-hmm. as we are recording so as far as we're aware there are rumours of two more still coming in ah, now, as we record this hasn't happened so if you're listening to this and it has happened then this is going to be a bit out of date basically what we want is a striker right it's what we've always wanted what we're getting told is a striker continues to be a priority but the player that we're supposedly meant to be bringing in on transfer deadline day is a defender called Lewis McCarry who we suspect, suspect sorry. is called Lewis McCarry judging by all Stoke. the comments on Twitter right yes. now Facebook um, public forums um, obviously Alex Neal currently at Stoke he gave us Tom Sparrow on loan so that's that a link immediately the comment uh, John Rankin made in the paper was that the player was involved when their first team game on the weekend. You look at the bench, Lewis McCarry was on the bench for Stoke. So that is the supposed, or that is the um, 
expected player, I would say. Um, he's a young defender, Scottish. Um, apparently can play right back, left back and the right side of a back three. So would fit perfectly with where we are currently. Gives us a little bit of... Um, he can adapt uh, to different positions, which is perfect for us. A bit of a utility player as well. And it also allows um, Tom Sparrow to possibly move into the midfield, where he's very capable as well. So gives us another option in the middle. So... Lewis McCary seems to be one of them. The other one supposedly getting linked is oh, is is my Gonzalez. Is my Gonzalez um, from Livingston? Uh, what did I say that wrong? No, I'm just saying my. Oh, right, okay. The possibility. Okay. Um, currently at Levy, big six foot one striker, definitely a journeyman. I mean, he's, I think he's been at every club under the sun. He's had two previous stints at oh, uh, in, in Scotland, um, Hearts at Minnan before currently Levy. Um, I mean, he's just been everywhere. He seems to be a, just a big barren ram, basically. <laughs> um, and he's getting linked. Supposedly he's allowed to leave Levy. Who knows? Levy apparently have got a few going out as well today, so it could possibly be that. Um, but there's, there's loads of... This is why I said Fair earlier on... I, this is why I said earlier on I feel so busy because it's transferred It's transferred deadline day. My phone's so blown up. Um, we fucking rumours and names getting floated about. As we sit here, Kyle Lafferty was, has left Kelly by mutual consent. So... Is that something maybe we're looking at? Some East Bride. Like, is that something we're looking at? Maybe. Um, he's obviously been in the studio here. Um, I've spoke to him. Very, very, very nice gentleman. Um, is that possibly something we're looking at? All of this is just stuff that it's people are throwing comment. names in. It's funny comments on Twitter right now about the possibility of signing him. Is there? Mm-hmm. Such as? Um, no comment. Okay. Uh, so is that something we're possibly looking at? As we currently sit, a striker and a defender is who we're getting linked with. So, Brandon, what is your thoughts, first of all, on possible players coming in and then we'll cover the players that we've already brought in? I know it's um, the, the possible ones coming in. <laughs> Any football fan's the same, regardless of... Like, at Aki's, we've always been sort of renowned for... Oh, the doors are shut. Yep. We've got nothing to get our hopes Lights up. are off, admin. Like, lights are off, admin. Um, yeah, that sort of... Part of, sorry, my phone keeps fucking. Mate, our, both our phones are absolutely blown up. Um, aye, so aye, we are used to the lights are off. Part of, like yep. nothing to be excited about. I think came up in my memories three years ago today. The out of nowhere fucking temp signing, mm. which the content for that was just phenomenal. Just the whole feeling about that yep. it was a Friday. I went yep. out after it and it was fucking brilliant. Just everything about that signing was brilliant, and that's the type of signing that. You always dream mm-hmm. as being a football fan, your, your, your club mates, just one out of nowhere that yep. no one expected, which sort of touches your heart a wee bit if you want to get all sentimental about it. So there's there's that element for mm-hmm. it for me, which I don't know who would do that. I saw people say James McCarthy, there's no chance. He's not a chance. Very grand. I mean, wages, it's not particular. No. Uh, it's, not, it's not a particular. Uh, I mean, he's getting linked back with Wigan exactly, and all that, so. Yeah, I know, but it would just it would be, that'd be, that's, you know what I mean? That's a, yeah. like, sort of having that sentimental value to sign in, which. George Osiris. Something like that, mate. <laughs> Honestly, that's, listen, I, I, would, I would take that as an, like, an extra body to the squad. That's not another squad member, but, um, no, like you've said, mate, a striker would be good because, like, Teehee's second half was decent. But let's be honest, we, we've won a few games recently, yep. but he's he's been nowhere getting near the Here. fall season. We've no spoke about something very big that happened in January. We've not even mentioned it. Talking about strikers, our beloved um, Chucky. Chucky's away. Our yes, captain. Aye, so um, my amazing. striker. Mm-hmm. Um, what? Um, really great guy. Really, really nice. Mm-hmm. We have spoke to him a few times in press after the games. Always been great. Genuinely, really gutted when he left. Um, possibly, you know, there was talk obviously his contracts up in the summer, we got money for him now rather than him leaving a free and I, I can understand that from a business business perspective, but see from a fan's perspective, I was really gutted to see Andy Ryan yeah, go. Like um I think he was in a bit of a rock in a hard place, Andy Completely. Ryan himself, do you know what I mean? He's probably the club aren't pro in the position really to offer wages to certain players because of where we're at in the yeah. table which as a business point of view you can completely understand it's frustrating from a fan's point of view because of course we want to keep the players that we have that mutual respect for the ones that get it yeah, as completely. always going on going about and Ryan was that type of player so it's frustrating to lose him because when we're in this dog fight he is one of the more experienced fans yep. he's the one that 
clearly gives a hundred percent and hundred percent. Sorry, and he's the one in all the interviews where he, he clearly voices that he understands it and he he knows it's not good enough. Blah blah blah, and that's what you need in the type of position yeah. we're in at the moment. And unfortunately, he's now away, but he's away fighting for a. A title position, a, a, a Champions League position, as well. a Champions League position. So no, good on him. He's at that time in his career where um, it will be benefiting his family if he goes and be successful there and gets a few bob. It's just it's frustrating in our yeah. part because it's a player that we could really use. Um, we we brought in new signings. They've been brilliant. Having Ryan as part of that would have been great. But he's gone now. All the best to him. Um, I don't think there's any sour comments, sour sort of feelings, nope. bad feelings from any fan whatsoever. Um, and I think the, the club Twitter admin also says, who knows, we might see him back for his third stand. Well, it's just, just to end on, on Andy Ryan, I think people forget that he was part of that Hibs team as well. I think people sometimes forget just because Excuse obviously me. he went away and, and did other things and you know played out of position and all that stuff. But people forget that. And obviously there's that fantastic photo um, him running back of him running it. towards the fans after the shootout, man. I mean, it's just... Um, really, really nice guy. Really good player, and um, will be sorely missed. The, you saw the fans' reaction on, on social media. Everybody was absolutely gutted. It came out of the blue for a lot of few fans, but it's just we're in the position. It's just football, baby. It's football, but we put ourselves in the position where we're bottom of the league when we know that we're. We shouldn't be bottom of the league, but we've got a squad and a team that shouldn't be bottom of a, the Scottish Championship, in my opinion, um, because of the. Standard of the league. <laughs> um, no, but again, we've, we've just came out of being in the top flight for 10 out of the past 14, 15 years. So um, we should not be bottom of the championship. And unfortunately, because we are in that situation, it's put us in a position where we've yeah. not been able to offer Vine a contract, it wouldn't make any business um, sense to do so. And he's went to pursue elsewhere. But again, um, no, he's been a great set servant on both occasions for the club. And I'm sure Aki's always have a special place in his heart and he'll have a special place in a lot of Aki's fans heart and we'll probably see him again soon hopefully that was lovely Brandon okay. let's talk about the players that we have brought in though mm-hmm. so one of the ones we mentioned earlier on Tom Sparrow mm-hmm. um, youngster right back midfielder from Stoke on loan again one of the ones where when the name came up I'm thinking I don't know a Sparrow um, you look at his kind of stats on transfer market as I think everybody does now uh, players nothing to really light the world um, right, light the world up I would say just, just going back there you can always tell um, who's a Wikipedia or who's a transfer market can person. you I always, tell, I always can tell that how? Yeah, I can just tell what their opinions and how they they voice on social media what, what type of person they are um, are you a transfer market guy yeah, yeah, I, I, I thought you were because Brandon sometimes whips out stuff like um, I'll be like oh, I don't really know this player and I'll be like uh, in 2016 he actually played right wing uh, in a game versus Sip I don't know how do you I know that's we'll, nonsense we'll, we'll come on we'll come on to uh, Something to do with that in our next sign in a minute, but right, um, okay. no, no, Tom Sparrow. Um, yeah, I know. If, oh, I know. I know what you're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> from, from, from what I've um, from what I've seen of Tom Sparrow so far, um, especially the game on Saturday against us, so he's been a brilliant signing. Um, no disrespect to Michael Doyle, but and no disrespect to the vast majority of the team, but we've, every player on that team hasn't been good enough this mm-hmm. season, so. We've quite rightly brought players in who have stepped up to the mark, and yep. it sh- it showed on the park. Eh? Sparrow he does he's when he's on the ball, he looks good. He's got he's got the defensive ability, but he's also got the attacking ability when he gets the ball. He, he's not scared to um, go direct to a player, but he's not also scared to put the ball to fuck as well. Mm-hmm. So no, he, he, from what I've saw him so far, he looks like a good player, and I definitely think um, it's an improvement in what we've had so far because. In my opinion, I do like Michael Doyle, um, but I just don't think he's been up to it so no. far. But and that doesn't mean he can't force his way back in the team, which um, with hard effort, I think we're building a bit of a better squad now. Um, whereas we were very lacking in depth yeah, beforehand, completely. where we were relying on youngsters um, yeah. coming off, which. I mean, you look at the bench a lot of the times, it's full of 16, 17 year olds, and he's looking at it and going, right, Ryan, Ryan Oney, up top, son, mm-hmm. 16 year old, get us a winner. Now he's looking at, I mean, you use Saturday as an example, he's looking at the bench and he's going, right, Connor Smith, Faye Hearts, good experience, on you come. Uh, Dylan Stevenson scored loads of goals in Newcastle on 21s, on you come. Daddy was an at a plenty of experience, on you come. As you said, it's just building a healthier building squad. A healthier squad. Um, My fear is, though, it's too late, but that's besides. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's a bit too late, but. 
Aki seem to always do this. This is it's a positive podcast. Sort of, sort of prime Aki's time now. Um, when we're dead Absolutely, it is. With eyes like the Undertaker or something. <laughs> sort of that. So, um, fingers crossed that's what happens. There's a long way to go, but yep. again, we shouldn't be in the position we're in. Uh, second signing, Dylan McGowan. <laughs> Yes, uh, Dylan McGowan. Um, there was no. I was just, I was thinking about the Dylan McGowan situation because there was uh, loads of rumours floating about when he was coming in. We were getting things like, oh, you know, he's, he's, you know, but I'm hearing he's over thirty. Do you know what I mean? I'm hearing he's, um, he's got caps for Australia and all this. And I um, then gave this information to Brandon and I said, here's the information I've been given. I think it's possibly this player. And I sent him a, a link uh, to this player. And um, Brandon came back to me within about 45 seconds and went it's actually this guy <laughs> and you just pinpointed him and I'm assuming that's what you're talking about with transfer yes, market that's exactly what I was um, on about I think you came to me and you're like if you saw because to be fair at this point I was sort of trying to stay away from social media and whatnot, and you, it's, it's impossible to do it with Aki's um, yeah. just I always get dragged back in but you came to me like oh we saw these these rumours people are saying that we're going to be bringing in a centre back uh, or a defender soon um, they thought him being an Australian cap um, sort of experienced <laughs> head and I'm like alright he says oh I think it's him and I've looked at it and I'm like okay <laughs> and I just I picked up my phone and I've I think I can't remember the type of information I inputted but I think it was something like Australia squad um, 2017 mm. or something like that because I was trying to pin- pitch on my head when this defender could have been in maybe yeah, prime yeah, yeah. time and I saw Dylan McGowan saw that he, the teams he'd played with him at he's come like come on look um, he's not really been getting a game like it's definitely him Aye. and uh, obviously it turns out to be him and yeah no but a sign and that's been uh, came in straight away and was captain talk to me about that I think we spoke about this in depth at air um, a lot of people have different opinions about it. They, they don't think it's right. Other people think, well, it just shows that Rankin, maybe they felt a bit sorry for Rankin because maybe didn't have any leaders in the okay. teams. Um, so there's a lot of different opinions about that. But again, it just shows that clearly he's came in with, with what kept a clean sheet in three of the last four. Yep. Um, and we've, we've obviously won four of those games. Um, so he's definitely assured the, the defence right up. I think ugh, a bit discredit in Easton because Easton's clearly getting on a bit. Yeah. And I think it's a good comparison because Easton of last season is maybe similar to that of McGinn mm-hmm. this season, if you know I what I mean. That sort of experienced head, talking to the people around him and giving sort of reassurance. Yep. Um, similar to that when it was Popescu, O'Reilly mm-hmm. and Easton last season that's probably when we played our best football yeah. and that's when we were most comfortable at the back so I think that's a good comparison because I think McGowan's brought o- O'Reilly into a game a yep. lot more because I think Daniel Dan sorry um, Daniel <laughs> um, uh, would be the first one to admit that the first half of the season just like the rest of the team he wasn't at the standard which mm-hmm. he knows he probably could play at and I think McGowan's helped him yep. refine that sort of form because he, he has been a lot more comfortable for the games or the, the periods which I've saw him play alongside McGowan. So um no, McGowan's been a great signing and long may the positive results and enhanced clean sheets continue because yep. the more clean sheets we get, the more chance we're gonna get of getting out of this mess. And no, um being captains obviously shows that he's got good leadership skills and he's um, definitely having an impact on the park, definitely. Well, let's talk about Dylan Stevenson, uh, the next one to come up. We've already mentioned him a wee bit before, goal scorer, got the winner. Um, again, a name that came up, and you know, and I think quite rightly people are going, we don't need another youngster, we don't need another young boy just to come in and, and fill a gap, and he's only 20 year old. Um, but then you, you look at his scoring record, and listen, this is a real catch-22 situation because we've looked at scoring records before Mm -hmm. and records down south. The one that always I talk about is Aaron Smith. (laughs) You look at him and you go, what a baller. Then he comes up here and he's a prick, right? Um, So part of me always thinks just because they've scored 10, 11 goals in the Premier League 2 or whatever it is doesn't mean he's going to come up here and do well. right? And obviously it's only been one game. But I do think that we've got something good I think if he's came through in the same crop as Lucas the ball they're getting the same type of 
training, they're involved in the same teams and we, we know how much we like Lucas the ball. I think Dylan Stevenson hopefully can then kick on to be something really decent, you know, and um, as you said, he took his goal well on Saturday, still not seen it by the way, he took his goal well on Saturday and hopefully that's the kind of standard that we can expect, hopefully that's something we can see consistently and somebody said something quite important I think was talking about needing pace up top you know I think Maitland spoke about that previously with fans is we need pace up top and we need somebody who's going to work in and around Teehee mm-hmm. I like I like Teehee I don't think he's as bad as people say he is but he's not a workhorse and he needs somebody who's going to work off of him mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be Andy Ryan but Andy Ryan's not blessed with pace himself and then Andy Wintner's getting forced out wide and he's also not had a fantastic season Andy Wintner but anyway I'm hoping that Dylan Stevenson can be that missing part and that then brings Teehee into a game as well. Sort of similar to what happened with Ogham Poe and Bruce Anderson. Mm-hmm. They worked so well, little and large, so to speak. I'm really hoping that Dylan Stevenson with the legs, he can do all the running behind, leave Teehee to do all the shite work, hold the ball up, win the headers, and that they bring each other into a game. And then obviously having the likes of Lucas DeBall, Connor Smith, Zanata. Um, Lou Smith, whatever around them can help complement each other. But I think, again, it's purely going off of I've not seen anything <laughs> of him. I hope we've got something pretty decent there. I think uh, you've had it. Move on. Next uh, one. I'm <laughs> you've pretty much had it in the nail with me. Um, I think that's the that's what we're hoping for. That's what we hope Stevenson can sort of. Um, don't know what the word you said there about he can do with Tee. Um, he compliments Tee. He compliments. That's the word. Sorry, he does. He, he, that's what I think. Bringing in someone with a bit of pace will hopefully compliment Tee because the first half he was he was just so isolated um, with the players that were around him. And that's because we're sort of probably playing players in positions again, which there probably isn't the most natural positions, and they've mm. not had the best of season so far as well. But again. <laughs> When we signed Stevenson, it was one of those ones where you had people on social media and all that, oh, another youngster, we don't need a youngster. And quite rightly so, I think, to a degree, because we keep going on and we always harp on about we need a striker, this is the type of striker we want. Yeah. We were sort of told before what we were constantly fed before the January transfer window was, let's get to January, we're going to invest money, we're going to get an experienced um, player's etc whereas the vast majority of signs we've made haven't been that yep. so it's been the complete opposite so people have been a bit sceptical of that but and then the fact that Ryan left as well I think that had a bit of a negative um, sort of taste in a lot of fans mouths so yep. it's just when we announced Stevenson there wasn't all this uh, there wasn't the glitz and the glamour people weren't getting too excited but see when you take a back step we're signing and see when you look at the comments for the Newcastle fans mm. we're signing the team that's third in the English English Premier League, the team that will be playing in group stage Champions League footballs, yep. probably most hot prospect striker, according to them, mm-hmm. which is a big label to put on someone, yeah, yeah. especially for coming to Hamilton Arkies. When you take a back step and look at that, then there's not much you can surely no. be criti- critical about. I know, as is Arkies fans, there's a lot that, that, that we can criticise mm-hmm. when things aren't at the best. Obviously, people look to pick out individual things that yep. they can just pick out for the sake of it but I sort of sat in the back burner with a sign I didn't really want to say much on it because that was what was playing in my head is that I'm reading all these comments about Newcastle fans I'd scored saw the goals that he'd scored for the 23s yep. he scored in their, their tour of Dubai when they mm-hmm. were when they were uh, when the World Cup was on so I was quietly confident about him just didn't want to say much and Saturday just that goal for me was just it was it was brilliant and yeah. his his work rate and as you said, the manner in which him and Smith were sort of complimenting Tihi and playing into that style and the, the setup in which Rankin had and I'm I'm trying my best not to get carried away here. Yeah. We're still bottom of the league, right? We're still a long way away from where we should be and we'd want to be. But things are looking positive and I think I think there's a lot to be a lot to be said a lot to be confident about with Dylan Stevenson and I, I hope he proves me right because yeah. I've, I've got really good uh, I've got a really good feeling about him and Connor Smith of course other one something we mentioned previously was it Queen's Park last season when they won the league was oh, there sorry just to go oh, back right? he's, he's got a lot of he does have a lot of boots to fill I know I've just gave him an absolute right. blessing for telling him giving him all these high hopes but 
he's also now got the same chant as David Templeton. Oh, does he? I don't think a player's had since... Since David Templeton? Since David Templeton, so... Give us a little rendition. No. <laughs> I actually came up in my... Came up in my memories one minute. I'll see if you can hear this. So we obviously, three years ago, three years ago um, today, we signed David Templeton, didn't yep. we? Um, so I won't give you a rendition. I'll let my, my Snapchat give you a rendition <laughs> of, of it. <laughs> So Dylan Stevenson. Nice. nice. Yes, so big boots to fill in both the living his Newcastle potential but also yep. living up to the, the David Templeton song. So no. You look very engrossed in your phone now. I'm really sorry. I've just I've, we were sent a tweet about something and it's just a guy's like, I can't find your podcast anywhere. I'm thinking, oh fuck. Yeah, but it's all good. Okay. Um but I um, Connor Smith, um, moving on to Connor Smith. Last year, one young player of the year uh, for Queen's Park when they won the league, so that's immediately good pedigree. I think he played like 38 games overall competition, something like that. Um, he's been involved in the Hearts first team so far this season. He was involved in their um, Euro- um, Europa games as well, um, to some degree. And again, as similar to what you said with Dylan Stevenson, when players go out and loan, the first thing you always do is go and look at the comments when they announce it. And it's a good judge of what who the player is and what standard they're at with what these comments are. Mm-hmm. So with Dylan Steven, you're absolutely right. It was all why we loaned to Hamilton. He's class, you know. Or that really weakens our um, our options if somebody gets injured mm-hmm. that he can come up for the youth and all that. So that's great. Similar with Connor Smith, they're going, they're going. I'd have kept him. I'd have mm-hmm. kept him in about the squad. I'd have kept him coming off the bench. You know what I mean, um, they're looking at it and going, why would you loan him out at this stage? So I think that says a lot about the player as well. And um, I'm excited about Connor Smith. Now, granted, a lot of that excitement comes off the back of David, who's very excited about him. But I'm excited about him. Um, I think he comes with good pedigree. He's still very young. He can play a few positions across the, the front line to give us a little bit of versatility. And um, hopefully it pushes people like Lewis Smith to... Um, hopefully get back to his best as well so I'm excited about Connor Smith I think um, that's a good comment you made there because I think we, as a whole these signings I think Rankin and this is where I felt a wee bit sorry for Rankin previously as well is that a lot of the players were very comfortable a oh lot completely them, do you know what I mean they just because of the lack of depth because we knew we had all these youngsters on the bench um they were very comfortable and they knew they could. <laughs> Somebody's just guided a massive balloon past the studio. It really it threw like me off big, there. Big Sorry. Balloon, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but uh, I, um, I, where was I? Um, Connor Smith, Connor, Lewis Smith, sorry. So I, it's, a lot of players were comfortable and they knew that their position in the team was yeah. probably guaranteed. So, like, having these signings, like you mentioned, Connor Smith, uh, when we first signed them, I wasn't sort of that. I wasn't that excited about it, do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I was uh, in my head. I think I was picturing you and Henderson, if I'm being yeah. honest with you. But everything you've said there is pretty right, and I've touched at the start about obviously playing the Europa League um, and then around the bench constantly for Hearts. And I spoke to there's a boy that we're pals with that's a, a Hearts fan, um, Ross McGregor. And he was he was telling us that it's it's just because the options they've got there, yeah. he just he can't break into the team yet because they have been so good recently and. Just, oh, the players that they've got are just more experienced yeah. and better at the present moment but it, it would be gutted if they go, get rid of them like mm-hmm. completely as like a sort of permanent so he thinks it would be a good move and he, he thinks that he will excel in the, the championship which judging by the, the, the half the, 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 the second half cameo we saw of him um, I'm pretty excited by him as well Um as long as they play like he plays like that, he plays with that confidence and he has that direct approach. Which again, we just keep we've, we've been we keep going on about having this direct approach that sort of dig in deep, and mm-hmm. he seems to have that. So again, I'm not getting my hopes up too much because as Aki's fans, we get carried away far too easy at times, and then we just get right back to reality. Mm-hmm. But no, um, the four signings we've made so far all been loans, albeit which. It's a wee bit frustrating. Um, that's probably the one negative I'd say about them. But all four of them get tick, tick marks, tick marks for me so far, and I'm um, I'm excited to see what holds uh, for the the latter two because um, yeah, it's it's good to feel positive again about your. 
Timo in the park. So to round off, we're going to look at Only the Fans, a segment where we ask you for questions and we do our best to answer very them. Very short, very sorry, very sorry about the very short... Short notice. Short notice. Um, I This was a sort of... We only decided we were going to do this yesterday, didn't we? So yes. um, it was very last minute and... Um, aye. We've got a few questions. First off is from Reese Bannett. Okay. Um, thank you for listening to the podcast, Reese. Uh, Reese says, Thoughts on the January transfer window so far, and have we added enough to stay up? Now, because we've spoke a little bit about that already, I'm going to change the question to say, if you could rate our January transfer window out of 10, what would you rate it? And do, we, do you think we've brought in enough to stay up? At this stage? Currently, as we stand, because obviously, you know, by the time this goes out, we could have two new players. We don't know. We're seven. Okay. The reasons for that is I think the players very much increase the score. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think I'm being very critical by using a seven. I think it could be better than that. Uh, the players probably take it up so far to the positions that we've came in and what I've got in my head how they're going to play because mm-hmm. we've not saw that much of them yet. So yeah, it's yeah. hard to make a judgment. I think that'd probably be a nine for the players, but the fact that they're all loans frustrates me a wee bit. Yeah. Um, because we were sort of told we're going to bring experience in where we're going to invest but obviously we need to invest to pay wages to totally get that but it'd be good to actually see some permanent signings because you never want to fall in love yeah. with a loan player um, which we've done many a time done many a time um, and also I think there's, there's other positions which we definitely could yeah. be bene- benefiting from I don't think we've signed an out and out striker yet which is always a player we, we yeah. want to see we've not done that yet so Part of my reason is I don't think we're finishing the transfer window yet. I think the players we brought in has been good, but I'm a bit frustrated there's not been any permanent signings. But it's, it's been a, overall, in my opinion, it's been a very good window. And have we have we done enough swings so far to stay up? I've always said we'll stay up, and I'm sticking to my word. All right, okay. Um, I don't disagree with a lot of what you said there, actually. So I'm not going to add too much to it. Totally agree about the loan players as a frustration. So that marks it down a little bit for me. I think the fact that there's only one real experienced player in that, and that's been Dylan McGowan. I think the fact that others are youngsters still. Granted, playing time here and there with other clubs, um, Connor Smith being the the, outst- the outstanding one because obviously he had the season with Queen's Park. So that marked it down again for me a little bit there. So I think a seven's probably fair. Obviously, as I said, um, a few times we're sitting here, we're still linked with two players. So possibly the time this comes out, there could be two new players in. Good Savas is take it down to two. <laughs> okay, um, so we could be sitting here, you know, when this comes out, and it's it's two good players, and that brings a mark up. But currently, I agree totally with a seven. Um, enough to stay up. Cynical as it sounds, um, I'm similar to you. I really, really try and stay away from asking for a manager to be sacked and saying we won't stay up. I've always tried to veer away from that, and I think I'm in the current. I think I'm in the same situation now where. I don't want to say that we won't stay up, but I think we're now at a stage where we've left it a wee bit too late. That's my opinion. Usually when we get to the January transfer window, we always say, January's when Aki's come alive. Do you know what I mean? We get, you know, February, you know, we get our players in, they settle in, we start playing good football, then we stay up. I just think that on those previous seasons, the gap hasn't been as quite Mm -hmm. as serious as it is now. And this kind of sounds really pessimistic for what is really a positive podcast, but I just think that if if we were six points better off, I'd have said, yeah, we'll stay up. Mm-hmm. I just think that our growth have got a knack of picking up points. Mm-hmm. Cove will eventually start picking mm-hmm. up points under Paul Hartley. He's not going to go on a losing streak to the end of the season. So I think best we can get now is playoffs. Do I fancy in the playoffs? I would say yes. In a one-off game, I would never ever write Aki's off. I so uh, the hanging that comes down to the, the, the dog fight as well, which is probably on the, the talking about the players we brought in is that they were told that you know, we've got to be experienced yeah. um, people who have been there, done that, sort of got that fight in them, etc. And that's not to say young people, young players don't have the fight in them. It's yeah. just when you when you put a persona and you, you picture what a fighter is, it's not young and experienced players yep. so but again sometimes quality outweighs 
completely the need for fight and I think we might have brought that in with some of the players so we'll see what happens alright um, next up is from Dave who said is ranking finally finding his feet I think that kind of comes into what I just said there about it always happens with Aki's January, February when we start to kick on he didn't have a transfer window John Rankin people have brought this up and I I, I feel like I want to go and say to them he didn't he? I, I can't be bothered getting into arguments with folk but he really didn't when you think about it he was not the manager of Hamilton Aki's over the summer he came in what a week two weeks before the season started officially so he didn't have a transfer window I think it's unfair to brandish him with that he's had to deal with what he's been given. what's been left of Stuart Taylor's squad that's what he's and had less. to deal with unless sorry obviously because people have left in the summer so he's not really been able to do anything and I think the signings he's brought in so far as you said have made us better so that's a good sign so finding his feet in the job no but there's definitely been an improvement as far as I can see on paper on um, obviously results is a big thing but instilling the sort of mentality that he wants to, that he spoke about instilling, I think he's now starting to get players who are going to buy into that a little bit more. No, definitely. And I think think one of the actual first conversation we had to be ranking actual broke Connor Smith into it. In that podcast, play that clip, please. Um, <laughs> well, I'm going to have to go find the clip. If the um, clip's not in it, then just know I couldn't be arsed. I, I remember. I remember. No, I, I said if the clip's right. no in this, I can't be arsed doing it, right? So you're just sorry because I, I, I brought him in it. <laughs> but anyway, um, no, listen, I think I've been one of his biggest advocates, rankings. I've, all, all, I've stuck up from time and time again yep. uh, I do truly believe there's something in them he clearly did do his class when we came in and everybody did have a bit of a positive outlook on him but there's no getting away from the fact we're bottom of the league for a reason we've not been good enough and quite a major part of that has been due to his stubbornness in my opinion with okay. persisting with that same setup over and over again he's broke that mould of stubbornness and we're seeing the rewards for it yeah. so is he starting to get his feet hmm don't know if that's correct, the correct sort of terminology, but he's broke the mould of that persistent stubbornness which we were losing week in, week out mm. with. And he's brought in a few players who he knows, and he's brought in a, he's brought in some players which will suit the type of play which he's moved into. Mm-hmm. Um and what he had to his disposal wasn't he exactly no. great. Like we, we kept going on about right, sack rank and give ourselves a chance. Bring in who and what, what difference they can have, do you know what I mean? Uh, you'll maybe get a few bounce on the bounce wins, etc. But high the squad probably squad limited them. The squad would limited them. The squad shouldn't have anywhere been near bottom of the league. Oh, right? I agree with we, that. We've definitely got a better squad than that, but we're not saying that we were one of the the top top end no. of the championship squad so he did have his limitations but results are improving and um, hopefully that bit of confidence I thought he saw at the end uh, the Thistle game he came over to fans and he sort right. of um, sort of gave it the old fucking one he Yes, yeah, so it was like there was a lot of passion in that so no hopefully this is um, again the start of yep. ranking having a good, good few results Alan has asked would you take Kyle Lafferty? Now, we mentioned it briefly just before. Mm-hmm. Kyle Lafferty, as we speak, has had his contract um, terminated uh, with Kelly. He's currently out kind of in the abyss. Apparently, um, if you take rumours, apparently he's in Hamilton right now. Yes, there's been rumoured sightings. With an um, Aki sponsor. With an Aki sponsor. the listen. If that's anything, who, nonsense, who knows? But uh, would you take Kyle Laffey? I think we spoke about this one of our last season's podcast, I think in January before he signed for Kelly. I think the answer was a resounding yes. Um, scores Listen. scores goals. Um, he's not uh, he's, he's not everybody's cup of tea. He's a bit like, uh, what is it he says? a bit like, um, uh, what do you call it? Marmite. He's a bit, I... Is it Marmite? Marmite. He's a bit like... <laughs> he's, a, he's a bit like Marmite. You either love him or you hate him. Um, obviously, there's rumours about him going to, like, Linfield and all that and, you know, and stuff. But currently, he's in the abyss. And so, the possibility is there. We're told there is going to be sort of some yep. form of investment within the January. We're going to bring in someone with mm-hmm. experience. And l- just a little piece of insider knowledge, insider training uh, from old Ben here. Um 
when he was a guest on A Pint and Two Shots um, in the studio, um, I just asked him, because obviously there was links apparently with Aki's, and I, says, I said, you know, was this ever a thing? And he said, that no, like there was generally never any talks or discussions about Hamilton. He said, but my agent is uh, pals with Ronnie McDonald. Listen, and he nah, said, so I think possibly that's where the links he, came from. He's not everybody's cup of tea, um, but... but I would take him in a heartbeat. 100%. 100%. The cunt scores goals, man, wherever you play him. And the position we're in just now, take absolutely everything. We need goals. Right, we need goals. And Can you imagine him, Dylan Stevenson up top? Him, Dylan Stevenson, Connor Smith, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's getting a stoner again. <laughs> Good great jog he's on. Um, no, man, like, 100%. Like, it's... If, if there's... Even the slightest possibility of that happening which I don't think there is right see if mm-hmm. I'm having my series head on I don't think there's any possibility of it but 100% go get him yeah give him what he wants a spe- six always, month deal we always give six month deal speculate to accumulate we're always going about this speculating to accumulate um, it'll bring in a lot of attraction media wise which yep. will have a positive effect but if we really want to ensure our safety in this league at uh, I could guarantee you with him. You need players team, like him. You need players like him. Experience, knows yep. knows how to do it and can score goals at whatever level he's played at. So 100% go and give him what he wants. Um, aye. Invest, speculate, accumulate, make us stay in this league and that signing alone would make us stay in the league. Another question through from... Uh, <laughs> in fact, I'll let you read this guy's name. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan McGowan's horsecock. Dylan McGowan's horsecock. Thank you very much for the question. I think that was previously Steve Lawson's fan club. But Dylan McGowan's horsecock. Thank you very much. Oh, no, no, no. Steve Lawson's mm-hmm. back training. Steve Lawson is back training. Um, again, another option in midfield can also play right back. But again, I would keep him in, in midfield, please. Um, so he not to sound too much like um, former people at Aki's we've criticised it's like a new signing um, <laughs> so Dylan McGowan's horse cock has asked us who do you think has been the best signing of the window now I I'll, think we should change that question okay who will who will be the best <sighs> signing it's, 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 how can we say who's been the best well, the, signing this is we've what, only saw a half, half so this is what I was we barely saw and hopefully that will change see I hate doing this because every time I've done something like this the players would or like if I've said I think this player will be class they always go into absolute flop so um, on paper you would probably say Dylan McGowan just because of how he started and how he's came in and he's really helped our defence um, I'll go out on a whim and I'm going to say Dylan Stevenson not just because he scored um, on his debut against part of this, so I just like a wee nippy striker. Mm. She's just a wee bundle of energy that's rapid. I always think they cause. Do you know who always goes back to cause problems here? And I always talk about this goal, and nobody ever knows what I'm talking about, right? But maybe you will. Nigel Hasselbank, right? You remember the guy? Hello. No, at home. And I don't know who it was against, right? Yeah. <laughs> but he's running through on goal. He's got a defender chasing behind him and one closing in and then the keeper. He nips by the defender closing in and then the two players run into each other, mm-hmm. the two opposing players run into each other. Concussion. Mm. He scores and then the, the ref has to stop mm-hmm. the game doing all that, right? Do you remember the game? The I goal? do remember the game. Thank, I, I thought I was going the game nuts. And, and the start, my nostalgia kicked in there and you like one of my... I've actually got the old, 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 the old Argentina top with Hasselbank 30 on the back. There you are. It's a bit big for me now if I might fit you though. <laughs> <laughs> here, by the, here, see this this is this is uh, off topic of Aki's, right? I've heavy put the weight on recently, man. It's oh, it's brutal. Aye. I feel horrible. Sorry, right, mate. You see, don't look that bad. Oh, no, I look bad. See when I was away in, uh, that weekend in Edinburgh, mm-hmm. I'm standing I get in the bathroom at the hotel and it's one of those full length mirrors. And you had to and, look and you, know, <laughs> you know that way where I shut the door in the full length mirror and I just went <sighs> <laughs> my sexy buddy. No, trust me, that was the last thing in my mind. Anyway, anyway um, um, I saw, so I just a wee bundle of energy mm. striker. I like Andy Winter when he first came in was exactly the same. Um, I, I'm going to put my neck in line. I think Dylan Stevenson, I think he'll score eight goals. Interesting. Um, who I think will be the best signing is Dylan Stevenson. Um, given him again, I've explained all my reasons why. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing him. Uh, and 
hopefully get out of this position we're in because there's no hiding away from the fact that we're bottom of the, the championship. We're, we're cut adrift um, by four points for the, the playoff and we're cut adrift by how many points to... Is it seven points? Seven at last time seven, I checked. Seven points to automatic relegation. So we're in a position for a reason. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We've won two in the league. Um We've got a massive game coming up Saturday. Obviously, things. Sorry to interrupt, mate. Four points for our growth, mm-hmm. and we are five points from Cove currently. So the gap isn't huge. Okay, but again, we're in the we're in the position we're in yeah. for a reason. We've not been good enough, and we've sh- sh- the results apart from this month um, have been nowhere near the level. Let's yeah. not get carried away. We always get carried away. So there's a long way to go, um, but. There's some promise shown, and fingers crossed, I'm able to see this promise. Um, and I'm sure a lot of other fans will want to see the promise because we all need to be in this together moving forward. And if we want to have any chance to get out of the position we're in, then we all need to be in it together. And I think we showed at Thistle that Thistle fans were saying that although there wasn't a massive amount of Arcade fans there, that it was probably one of the best atmospheres they saw. The players get right behind the the, the team all match on Saturday and that's what we need now at the end of the season and I'm positive if that's the case then we'll definitely get out of this position and we can get out of this fucking dog fight that we're in and that we shouldn't need to be in and I'm, I'm positive we can get out of this Alright guys thank you very much for watching we really appreciate it as always like, subscribe, share all that good stuff if you follow us on Twitter uh, we'll be keeping you up to date with all the Yankees news going forward fingers crossed we'll be back watching games soon thanks for watching